and welcome back. It's been a little while since we last seen each other and since I last streamed, but uh, this was a game I was really looking forward to. And as a wanderer myself, how could I say no to playing something called The Wandering Village? So the devs have thankfully provided me an early access key to check out uh, a few days before the game launches. So we'll jump right into it. Now, in case you haven't played The Wandering Village, uh, this is a city builder on the back of a awesome feature called, well, let's uh, let the game talk for itself. How about that? We'll play on Novice just so we can get through the tutorial. Um, I have played this before, but because this is the first episode, I thought it would be a great thing to show off the game in its entirety, just in case you'd be interested in it. And we'll just title this Early Access. Because mm, I know it'll probably get a little silly as I remember how to play. from our homes by the toxic spores, we kept wandering, looking for shelter. But not in our wildest dreams did we imagine what we would find. A giant tank, the Tyrannus. <laughs> this isn't Fuga, veteran or bust. We'll do that afterwards, after I get my legs and we do a, a, a little warm-up run. I gotta show off the tutorial, you know. Um, this is a media key that I got, thank you so much. I am now officially a big enough streamer to get early access keys. Isn't that exciting? And uh, the devs were really awesome. They've been working on this for a few years now and I'm really excited to get into this game. Welcome. Hello, friend. I am the village elder and in charge of the good people here. Our people, the Nyomans. Oh, it's kind of like Felineko and Kaninu all over again from Fuga. Um, references from my first stream, in case you haven't gotten that far. I've traveled far and endured many hardships throughout the years, but now we have come across an Onbu, an ancient beast believed to have gone extinct centuries ago. Our encounter must have been fated. It has most likely been asleep in the ground for a very long time. Maybe it woke up because the toxins keep seeping further and further into the earth. The poor thing seems to be exhausted and has gone back to sleep for now. I once read that Anbu draw their nutrients from the ground, so I wonder if it can sustain itself out here. It seems like we need to take care of each other from now on. My experience has brought our people here, but it is now time for you to take over and lead them to a better place. To ease the transition, I could teach you a little of what I learned, tutor you even, a tutorial, so to say. What do you think? Well, I'm perfectly fine with a tutorial, so we'll pause the game and kind of take a look around. Now, this is a uh, isometric kind of 2D, 2.5D uh, city builder, and everything takes place on the back of Anbu, this giant, cool, kind of plant dragon dinosaur creature. And I love how you can zoom out and get a full view of everything around you and the city that you're building. Hi, Vaden. Nice to see you. Uh, we also zoom out and we have a map. So this is called the Wandering Village. We're going to be doing some wandering. We have a lot of different resource points, which we can eventually scavenge by sending wanderers out. Um, but we'll worry about that later. Uh, as you can see, the path goes here and later on we'll install uh, the Twitch integration so people can be villagers and uh, actually control where Anbu goes. But for now, let's have a nice little tutorial game. All right, so the Elder's Notebook. Um, first thing that I've noticed is that they really push the Elder's Notebook, which gives you a Pretty much a giant TLDR of every piece of information that you'll ever need. And it, it's a little bit of a spoiler because I usually like playing these kinds of games without any sort of knowledge and kind of looking through um, through sorts of um, tech trees and gameplay interactions and that kind of stuff. I really want a game that recapture that feel of Banished, but not Oops Too Many Nomads, now everyone starves. Well, good news for you, I'm not going to spoil it, but this game has a little bit of, uh, a little bit of that sort of thing. It is definitely a fun looking game though, and we'll see how much it changed from the early access versions I got uh, during the Steam Survival Fest. But so we have our game goals, we want to save as long as possible, scavenge materials from biomes, and take care of our giant companion, Ombu. So, pretty simple sort of TLDR. 
We have a lot of different information. Blood extractor. That sounds spooky. Um, you can... It, it gives a, a very concise kind of description of what you have to do and what everything is. But we're not here to read a encyclopedia. We're here to build a town. So we can adjust our game speed. One, two, three, four. Awesome. And we have a pause. Uh, construction at least six tenths. I'm getting cold to the lamb vibes here. So let's actually take a look at what we have going on here in this city before we start building. So we have berry farms, which will be pretty important for early game food production. We might have to find... Ooh, this will probably be a very efficient source of berries. So I usually like to start just building right here in the center and then spread out. I'm not a very big um, city planning sort of gamer. I like to see where the game takes me in terms of what I design, what I encounter, uh, and how everything will start to look as we play through it. And let's just let's get six of those. So as you can see, all of our villagers, and I love how you can zoom in. It has this great sort of Paper Mario cutout 2.5D style where you can actually zoom in and kind of see everything on different planes, which I think was a, a great way to go for a city builder because the chart there is palpable. Like each one of these little huts has its own sprite. Uh, each one of these characters is distinct enough that, you know, they have a little flavor to them. And if you click on them, we can see their name, what they're doing, whether they have residency. Nothing really too crazy in terms of uh, villager differentiation, but that's still pretty cool. All right, harvest at least 10 woods, construct at least 10 tents, or 8 tents. So we'll need two more tents, and we'll have to find a nice place to harvest things. Hmm. So we're probably going to be uh, growing upwards. So I'm guessing we'll start cutting here. And I do want to take these trees out of the way because there are berries there. We might be able to put a berry farm there and see how much that'll work out for us. This can go. But it does seem like we'll, we'll probably want to place a berry farm here as soon as possible and kind of move things out that way. Another area kind of looks... Like it could be here. So let's speed this up. This is uh, this is definitely a time management sort of city builder. As you can see, we have the current time, the heartbeats of Onbu, its poison level, its hunger, and its sleepiness. So this thing generally does whatever it wants until you unlock some technology and gain its trust. But it'll keep following this path until it hits a crossroads. And then sometimes it'll wait for us uh, to make a decision. Sometimes it won't. But for the most part, I've noticed you spend a lot of time kind of just watching things happen. It's a great little zen game. Throw it up to times four speed like you would a SimCity game and watch it go. And of course, let's get some roads. Roads don't cost anything except effort. And they keep people from being idle, which is also a good thing. So let's... Yeah, that'll be great. So it goes right between the berries. We'll put a... I'm going, yeah, okay, berry gatherer time now. So what we want to do is figure out the most efficient place to put this berry gatherer, because this will be the source of a lot of food we had. Uh, in one of my games, I had an efficiency 85 berry gatherer, and it was like the best thing ever. I had no problems with food for the longest time. Uh, let's see what's up here. Efficiency 76. Oh, wow. So this is actually the way better area for, for a berry gatherer. 76, 76. Hmm. Okay, so that's not a bad place. What about over here? This is efficiency 31. I do like how they give you a little pop-up so you don't have to guess as to where to put these. I'm actually surprised. I thought that group up there would have been the perfect place for a berry gatherer. Yeah, so I guess 50 something is about as good as it gets. 63. All right, never mind. We're actually going to cancel all these roads and move elsewhere. So let's see. Harvest tool. Where is priority tool? And remove. 
Okay, that doesn't work the way I thought it would. So as far as I know, there's no way of mass selecting. Or at least, a oh, deconstruction tool. I like how I immediately corrected myself there. That's fine, we'll build our berry gatherer up here where we're super efficient. 76% efficiency. Get some food. Yeah, I like that right here. Harvest all these trees out of the way. This will be a great early game source of food. Prioritize any task, the tutorial says. All right, so this does use a Tropico style priority system. So your nomads will do whatever they would like. And this really does remind me of a kind of a simpler version of Tropico, uh, but in a good way. There's there's definitely a lot of charm to just watching things happen sometimes. So we actually want this to be super prioritized because we definitely want food. I'll kind of think in the meantime, so we can also construct a farm. It's the next thing it asks. Now this looks like a great place to put a farm somewhere here, probably somewhere close by. We could put a, a mushroom farm here in the future because we do have to feed Onbu too. Uh, farms actually don't need that much space to operate too, which is great. And honestly, I'm thinking we might as well put it together, put a storehouse very close. And then hmm, where would it look kind of nice and aesthetic? So I'm guessing we'll put like a sawmill here. That would probably be good. Once all that is gone. Yeah, you know what? Let's put it right here, right next to the houses. It'll probably be a pretty okay place. And then I'll leave enough space for a uh, woodcutting camp so we don't have to worry about that. And then we'll make this a secondary priority. Was Ombu moving again? Nah, they're still sleeping. The sleepy boy. Ah, stretch. Yep, I will stretch. Thank you for the stretch gravy. Thank you for the big sip. I was feeling a little thirsty. Hmm. We got our gatherer done too. So one thing I haven't built, and what I like to build ahead of time usually, is a worker post. Um, because these worker posts will actually speed up um, most citizen tasks, uh, depending on what you assign them to. So, for example, uh, calling, gathering, constructing. This is a great way to deal with that. We're going to pause for a second. Farming is a little involved, but not too crazy. Um, depending on what things you have, um, you can plant food, eventually cook it. But you do have to set a area to where the farmers can farm. And we'll set it right here. You don't need a lot of area to farm, though. Um, just usually about this much is probably more than enough. So we'll harvest that out. In the meantime, I'm actually going to also get a water collector and a material storage. Since we don't have a warehouse yet, a material storage will actually be really useful to kind of get this together. And then get some water tanks down here. Hmm. Hi, Dretch. <laughs> that is the least appetizing way of saying self-care that I can think of, but I appreciate it. So let's actually build two water collectors. And we'll go from there. This will keep everybody pretty busy for a little bit. And then we can also set workers. So this is very similar to Tropico 2, Tropico 3. Um, all the later ones, too. I spent a lot of time in 4 and 5, even though they were basically the same game. But I love these sort of calm city builders. Hammering away. The aesthetic is so nice. Like this sort of very brightly colored primary color tribal aesthetic. It has really nice blue cloaks. And that is the end of our first day. So, 
I'm getting a little bit of a head, uh, a little bit ahead of myself on the tutorial to get the air wells going. This game does have a kind of soft time limit or some time pressure, um, where you definitely want to not waste any time and keep your finger over the the space bar, uh, just to keep things from getting um, a little too fast. Keep it from getting away from you. That we're eventually going to need a carpenter and a stone cutter, and that will pay place right here. We might as well just place those down to get them down. So that's actually not too bad a place. We have a mother tree right here, which will slowly produce saplings for us. What is this? A mushroom. We have some ombu spikes, which we don't really want to cut. We also have mother trees down here. This is the perfect place to think about putting that there. Uh, we have some stone here. Ooh, the boy's waking up. Here comes the boy. How majestic. All right, before we waste any more time, though, let's let's finish putting stuff down. All right, so we have, let's see. Yeah, that'll probably be fine right here. Onbu rests immediately after after starting to walk, I guess. So what do we have on the horizon here? We just have a bunch of rocks, a lot of wood. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to try to get salvagers up and running as fast as possible because they'll be a great source of raw materials. But we are actually out of resources, so let's um, let's tell our guys to go do some collecting. Being very careful not to disturb any of Onbu's little spikes there because that'll make them hate us, and that is something I don't want to do. Now, I... I'm not sure what the, the price of having low loyalty on a giant dragon dinosaur thing you're building a house on is, uh, but I can't imagine it'd be very good. Probably would involve Vor. That's my theory. Alright, so I also need more stone. Uh, let's harvest some more of that. Yeah, this game definitely feels like the perfect sort of game to play after a stressful day looking around we have a lot of mother trees that's actually really good if we can get to that point in the tech tree she's just going to mark all these for harvesting I'm wondering if we should get a spike or two early on just to speed this up I could do this but I'm not sure if I want to piss off the ground oh yeah you you definitely don't want to make the literal ground under your feet mad is a whole new meaning of earthquake. So as you can see, it also says no horn blower built. This kind of spoils a little mechanic a little later on where we get to blow a horn and have Onbu do some stuff. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Look at how nice all that looks. Oh, hi, Brittany. So nice to see you. I'm hoping you have a great day. We're playing a little bit of The Wandering Village, a very... Um, well, I don't know if I would call it an exciting game, but it's a very calm and interesting game full of meaningful choices. Thank you for the raid. Um, hope you enjoy living on the back of Onbu, our giant dragon dinosaur literal village here. But yeah, I, I figured with a name like The Wandering Village, this is perfectly on brand for me. For everybody coming in, uh, this is an early access key, and I'm really happy for the devs to have provided it. A fun little city builder so far let's speed this up in the meantime let's assign some people here uh, for the speed boost since as we assign more workers here they'll get speed boost to doing stuff and every little bit counts here yeah it's a really neat game uh i was really looking forward to it and when i actually got chosen to stream it a few days early i was super excited i was at a convention though which was kind of sad most of the people um watching this vod on youtube will probably know me from my convention footage more than anything else but I also do streaming here and there. I'll probably upload this VOD. And uh, hi to everybody on YouTube as well. All right, we got our water collectors, which is great. Uh, we got two... Oh, wait, no, those are those are water tanks. I screwed up. Well, that means we definitely will stay hydrated, chat. Isn't that great? But we need two water collectors so we don't dehydrate before we can actually hydrate. And yeah, we'll just put these here. Eventually, I want to set up a 
a cooking area over here. But yeah, Brainy, I hope your stream was great. Let's give you a quick shout out while we're here. Brainy the RPG cat. Ah, they were playing retro games. I wonder what kind of retro games you were playing. It doesn't say, but hopefully you had a great time doing that. All right. So we we kind of screwed up. We got two air, air water tanks, which isn't too bad, but at least now we can finally hydrate before we dehydrate. Everybody's collecting some resources, 12 reserved, nine reserved. We'll have to do some more chopping down of some trees. Luckily this doesn't affect on boost trust. For everybody coming in, so the basic story is um, a long, long time ago, for whatever reason, there was some really spooky... What are you doing? You're not doing anything. Are you full up? Oh, you're full. Oh, that's what's happening. Nobody's carrying stuff. Are we full on berries here too? There was this really spooky fungus that spread everywhere and caused a whole lot of trouble. But luckily, we found this giant cool creature that let us build our houses on his back, and it's up to us to protect them. Those settlements. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that research. But you know, uh, I'm actually going to skip the tutorial a little and get some um, very important research. We're going to try to get into the scavenger tree as soon as possible. So we'll build one of those high priority. Hydrate before you dehydrate. <laughs> Zydrate. Zydrate. Well, if if you think of a good way of fitting in Zydrate, you let me know. Okay, so we need a... It's asking us to build a pantry next. Where are the pantries? There's an herbalist, which we'll need. There we go. A pantry stores food. So because this will be the food area, eventually uh, we're just going to build it here kind of start laying down the groundwork for our or of our city. We definitely want research as soon as possible. So more stone. As far as I know, stone doesn't actually respawn, but I guess it wouldn't make much sense unless it was like zits that were poking through Onbu's uh, on crest. You encounter a small group of nomads. Do we let them join? Of course, because in this game, having manpower actually really matters a lot. You know, I remember somebody was uh, talking about the surrealism that gingerbread men build their houses out of gingerbread. And somebody else's response was, well, to fifth dimensional beings. Us carbon-based life forms making houses out of carbon is probably likewise very screwed up. So that's kind of that kind of stuck with me <laughs> whenever I think of that sort of thing. So you know, making uh, making houses out of rocky zits might not be the worst thing you can do. I mean, you do have on on boost spikes here as well. You could technically make a house out of ombu. Right, uh, we're actually going to open the research tree. We don't really care about food that much. Actually, yes, we do, because we need we want to get the scavenger hunt up and running as soon as possible. And we'll kind of think of it from there. So how research works is um, there's this meta resource called knowledge that we get from exploring the world of scavengers, which effectively counts as unlock points that allow you to research stuff. Uh, you also have to spend time in the form of researching via scientists, and the more researchers you have, the faster you research, research, and the more access you have to specialized resources. So, like, we building stuff, bread, uh, eventually you get to, like, screw around with Fonbu even, and collect their dung, extract their blood, maybe even, you know, do some other stuff, like, make them poop. Because, I don't know, that's that's something everybody always wanted to do, right? Uh, we will probably grab the horn blower later. Um, this is where I think the game might have some linearity issues, because I'm sure there is a 
proper order of things you should research and build ASAP in order to not miss out. Because if we go onto the world map right here, and this was something I've noticed as I played a couple of times, we have not even unlocked scavengers, and we've already lost a settlement here, a ruined settlement here, a ruined settlement here, and people are a pretty rare resource, and that's kind of a, a shame. Uh, since we don't have a horn blower, we can't tell on Boo which direction to go. That's another mechanic that's kind of locked out. And it feels like a lot of the game in the early game is spent just rushing out and, and trying to get out of this early game sort of thing. I'm imagining mining some rocks and suddenly it pops and kind of splorches. Ah, uh, yeah, deep rock galactic. I could just get covered in lava then. Or I guess superheated dragon blood. I'm not sure if this is a dragon or a dinosaur. I, I guess it counts as... Uh, th there's a term for a six-legged dragon thing. I don't really have one. Uh, as carriers in my worker post, sure. Uh, we already have four workers here, but we'll reduce them and just turn them into carriers just to get that out of the way. What's next? Tutorial? Three workers. All right, general workers, sure. And we had four there. We'll have four again. I'm not sure what exactly the specialization is is really for. Mostly because I, it doesn't look like they get a different movement speed boost. So I think general workers, unless you really, really want to optimize things, like don't um, oxygen not included style, it's probably best to just leave it on general workers. Oh, we need to build some more tents because we just got some new nomads. So we'll take care of that. We'll just drop that down. In the meantime, we'll wait for that research to finish and chop this tree down since it's kind of in the way of seeing what's going to... Actually, that would have been really aesthetic. I could have left that there. Oh, well. I think we need the resources more than we need anything else. Bustling village on the top of a giant whatever this thing is. Giant Onbu. All right, so it's asking us to build a kitchen. Let's actually check out the resource or research menu really quick. How far are we? About 59%. Um, okay, great. So we have people building those. Those are going to be really important. Let's see how many idle people we have. Our food is going down, so we'll have to start worrying about that eventually as well. Zero idle unemployed so we can definitely bump that up to two we can bump that up by two and that should employ everybody and we'll have one idol just as a do whatever i think we're in a pretty good spot right now we got two water collectors running we have no water unfortunately since everybody's planting crops maybe we should build another water collector one of those people who's really reactionary when it comes to city builder games. I'll be like, oh, I don't have enough th of this. I better build this. And then, you know, sometimes it bites me in the butt. Kaiju. Would it be a kaiju? Would it be a kaiju? Maybe. It's definitely big. It's definitely stompy. But kaiju stomp on top of cities. We're stomping on top of the kaiju. I don't know if that really counts. Help, I've been a giant degenerate in New Vegas. Three death squads from the Legion? Oh, well, I mean, degenerates like you belong on a cross, I guess. <laughs> oh, New Vegas. I haven't played that in, like, ten years. But definitely one of my favorite Fallout games. But I think is everybody's favorite Fallout game. So I'll say Fallout 2 is my favorite Fallout game instead. I really, really want to play some new vegas if i could get it working on ultra wide which unfortunately doesn't happen easily ah so onbu we missed it so onbu will usually uh talk about you know you'll get this notice thing that says they seem unsure about where they want to go and you can guide them in one direction or another and um as we can see, I guess it chose a direction with a feeding spot, which is pretty fine. They're kind of hungry, uh, but we want to get those salvagers up and running as soon as possible because every one of these that we miss is an opportunity that we miss out on resources we can't really get otherwise, uh, which is people. People are very hard to get. So let's see. Did we... No, don't cancel research. Oh, I, I think we actually completed this research while I was talking about um, New Vegas death squads. <laughs> All right, so 
Uh, what are we researching next? Doctor is pretty important once we get into the fungal zones, because that's that's just a huge pain. Uh, I'm going to get a dung collector after I get the horn, and I think we're going to go into compost heaps afterwards, just so we can get um, the biogas like fungus uh, decontaminator people, because that is a very big thing that I think is going to be useful. All right, so we have a research queued up. I wish it kind of did like a noise that goes, oh, by the way, your research is finished. That's one thing that I missed. If it does do that, well, I was too busy thinking about New Vegas to actually hear it. Let's get a salvager up, unless we haven't unlocked it after all. Ecologist, Umbu Interaction, Exploration, or maybe we just haven't unlocked it. Ah, we're researching it right now. Okay. There we go. That's what that cog means. All right. Well, either, either way, we need more... Um, Actually, we have enough planks and stone slabs, so we're we're actually proceeding pretty well. We're a little behind, I'm assuming, where the game wants us to be, but we'll have enough stone slabs and everything. Uh, we're actually going to go straight into kitchen. We'll need two kitchens eventually, and we'll worry about that later. So we'll get one for now so we can cook all these berries and such. I'll start pulling people out from the worker post for that. Have a good night, Vaden. Great to see you here. So I'm thinking we'll play about two hours today, maybe three hours. Uh, we'll throw these VODs up on YouTube and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Because this is a game I definitely want to play uh, all of this week while it's nice and fresh. And look at him. He's sleeping. Isn't that so cute? It's just rocking back and forth. Can you imagine just falling asleep to the motion of your, I guess, giant rocky friend that's acting as your planet? All right, so we have chefs, great. What's our research like? Still, still taking a little bit. So I think we'll be in good shape to maybe build another kitchen. Because the happier our people are, the faster they work, which is actually a really cool thing. And food gets multiplied as you cook it. So that's also a great little thing. Yeah, I think I think we can definitely do that. We're, we'll eventually have to queue up some more some more harvesting operations. We might actually just take a spike. I know the last time I did that, Anbu didn't like that, and they never listened to me ever again. So maybe not. There's nothing going on. They can just grab all this rock. Uh, once we get scavengers, it gets a little easier on the resources. Construct an herbalist, assign plots, research the doctor. All right, so this is where we're getting into a uh, preventative sort of uh, tech so that we can actually advance through fungal zones, which are a huge issue later on in the game. Um, but we'll see that as we go along. All right, so I'll actually build a road, probably going that way, because I don't think that'll be full of berries anytime soon. I'll set a farm on medicinal herbs. Herbalist. There we go. Like we mentioned earlier, these, these places don't actually need a whole lot to get going. Oh, actually, we'll want, we'll want something else there. We'll want to grow down here. Yeah, I think this will be fine. Herbalist, we'll need to get a doctor eventually. We don't really have to keep a doctor on standby until we actually get some infected stuff, so that's at least okay. All right, village doctor is fourth. We are researching the horn blower, the dung collector, scavenger hunt. But even. Hey, Cactus Pat! Hopefully, you're having a great night. 
We're playing a little bit of The Wandering Village. Uh, it's a game that I just got a early access key from the devs. And so far it's been a very fun, calm experience, kind of perfect for something after the con. Cause I know after any sort of convention, I feel like Onbu right here. I just want to take a nap. But yeah, this is, uh, this is a pretty interesting game concept. We get to build a village on a giant walking six-legged dinosaur dragon thing kind of go from there so we're still in the early game this is definitely one of those games you set to four times speed and kind of just watch life go on your face is numb and you haven't eaten all day dental work sucks oh no what happened did you get like a, a molar remove or rounds redone or what is it called a um a root canal those are always unpleasant all right, so we're actually having a pretty good surplus of water here. We got beet soup going. Excellent. I think we're on a pretty good way. Oh, and I think we've just researched. Yeah, there's there's no pop up or anything, but we just researched the scavengers hunt, and. Thank you so much for the gift, Miso. It's great to see you here. Hopefully you're not being too honey. <laughs> Alright, so the scavenger hunt actually has to be built um, on these sides here, somewhere down here. So we'll probably build it here and just extend this road out. It'll look pretty aesthetic and it'll make sense in terms of our city design. And then we'll speed this up, put on high priority, which actually we... We don't have enough planks. Oh, because we don't have enough resources. What a vicious cycle. So we actually have to have people do some chopping. We're out of wood and we're out of stone. Which the closest ones are over there. Uh, we might actually have to dig up one of these onbu spikes, which is not great, but it's 30 resources. We, we might just have to do it. Hopefully the trust loss won't be too much, but we'll try to regain that later. Drill out, repin, and crown. Oh, yeah, that's going to be painful. Do, can you at least, like, drink clear liquids? Can you have soup? Sometimes they, they let you do that. All right, so how much stone slab do we have? Zero available, zero. Yeah, so we just need to drill that out. While well, Ombu is asleep, hopefully that won't wake them up. I'm actually wondering if any existing construction is taking up more stone than it needs to. Yeah, not really. It's been a while since you've been able to catch a stream. It's been a while since I streamed. I think the last time I streamed was about two weeks ago. I'm trying to get more regular at streaming, uh, but with conventions, real life, and all that stuff, it gets a little hard. So I'm, I'm going to try to stream at least two hours a day this week, uh, streaming this game. Uh, I'll actually have some things to do this weekend. Um, but other than that, because conventions are kind of quieting down, I'll be streaming a whole lot more. Once I'm done with this uh, furry migration stuff as well. Oh, I'm not looking forward to the furry migration video editing either because the lighting was like furry backrooms found footage and it was extremely kind of kind of creepy. Every light was like a, a can light and that was just placed every three feet haphazardly and it gave you the most ominous shadows to work with so that'll be kind of interesting to see how that turns out. Please build the scavenger hunt. Ooh, we can watch Unbu eat. Look at him go. Munch, 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 munch. Furry migraine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty much how I feel. It was a furry migraine. Delicious food. Oh, it evacuated its bowels. We don't get to see the poop. How do we know that? This isn't Cult of the Lamb. Yeah, we, we definitely need more resources, and this is where the bottleneck kind of starts happening. I probably shouldn't have made that second kitchen before I made the scavenger hunt, or a scavenger hut, I should say, because now things are going to get a little harder. Uh, we're actually going to drop back on these workers and see if we can just put more people on harvesting, because we've kind of hit an early game resource 
route. We have enough food, now we don't have enough resources. We're just barely out of stone slabs. It's a shame. Honestly, I think I'm I'm just gonna cancel this air well because all those resources aren't doing anything for us right now anyway. And we just need to build that as soon as possible. So it's three into two. Well, we'll see how this works out. Hopefully somebody will cut down this on boost spike eventually. Ah, you've been enjoying the con coverage, especially since you can only afford a couple of local cons myself. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely expensive, but the way I kind of get around it... Oh, oh no, we're missing all this really cool stuff. It makes me sad. Uh, the way I get around it is is actually like point credit cards and paying them off every month and, and just finding the cheapest, lowest prices for flights and that kind of makes it stretch out a little. Because I, I unfortunately don't really profit <laughs> from con footage, but I think it, like memorializing that sort of thing is really important. Well, now we're at the mercy of the AI. Actually, why don't I prioritize this? Maybe it'll actually get done sooner. Who would have thought? People over here? No, they aren't even over here yet. Well, hopefully Elmboo takes the right path over here, because we, we can't tell them where to go. Well, either way, it looks like poison nomads. Okay, so this is where the doctor's office is going to be very useful. Um, we are still doing the dung collector. It's, uh, it might be a little bit of a stretch for us to get herbs and everything else done, because we've been trying to get around this bottleneck. And this is kind of what I'm talking about, that this game early on does really feel like it has a optimized route just to make sure you check all your boxes. And there does seem to be a, a little bit of, of routing issues. This is a roguelike. I am going to play through it a couple of times this week. We'll see how far we can get. As far as I know, there's no official end. It's just a build until you're, you're happy and done with it or until you die. But... I think that's like SimCity. You can't really complain about SimCity being like that, can you? All right, so we're building the herbalist. That's great. But I do need, do need more stone slabs and more planks though. Yeah, and I don't really care about this right now, which I'll eventually have to. There we go. This will be for herbs. We'll eventually have to make a, a doctor place as well. Actually, we might swap. Yeah, so as far as I know, there, there's no way to action. Oh, there we go. So village doctor is going to be next after the dung collector. But I don't think we'll be able to get those poison nomads. Stoat foxes all the way down. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's funny because um, I've kind of soft rebranded into something called a pipe fox. And uh, in myth and legend, it kind of covers stoats, weaselly things, noodley foxes and such. And uh, translated, it kind of fits my vibe pretty well. So I'm still a little half fox, half weasel you love. Although now I just go by pipe fox because people kind of get that more than the last thing because you know my mother was a fox my father was a weasel and I have the charm of both of them <laughs> all right so we have our herbalist herbalist herb herb list uh we'll leave that alone for now mostly because we don't even have a doctor's thing yet um we're going to have to worry about that later uh, at this point, we're kind of out of the tutorial and we're, we're kind of just waiting for things to happen. This is our top priority because salvagers are extremely important in terms of getting past this kind of resource bottleneck and getting more people even. Pike Fox? No, Pipe Fox. Like, you know, uh, in my alternate model, I have a pipe. So uh, Pipe Foxes, if you Google it, uh, they're little weaselly foxy familiars that live inside pipes or other sort of tubes like scroll cases or or stuff like that and that's why i have a pipe 
All right, so we have encountered a group of nomads. Five minutes. We're actually going to let this timer kind of go out and accept it at the last minute because we don't want those people to die. Uh, we definitely want to get a village doctor, cure them ASAP. I'm actually going to drop somebody off, uh, have them work and grow some herbs ASAP as well. Found the cryptozoology entry. Yeah, I love me some cryptids. So we'll wait and see what's on the map. We don't really have anything else to do on the map either, unfortunately. Not enough workers. We need to also outfit this uh, salvaging area. So what I'm going to do is start pulling staff from other things that we don't need as much. Um, we definitely have enough food. We don't need that many. We're going to reduce that by one. Um, berry gathering is pretty fine on two. Um, we no longer need two here. We don't need two here. So we'll just let that trickle in and hopefully they'll reassign themselves. We have full staff and now we can start grabbing stuff. So priority wise, um, let's kind of think about what we need to grab. There's a settlement that has villagers, which we'll want. We'll want to grab the settlement, then the shrine for the knowledge, because knowledge helps us research things. And we definitely need sight before it goes away. So get equipped. Let's go. Full staff required. Where's, where's the last staff? We need that last explorer. Scavenging party is ready. All right, send party one day. So we still have another two minutes or so before that event goes by. We've just re or we're researching the village doctor right now. We'll accept that at the last moment. And we'll figure this out as we go along. Fresh air, air free of any toxins. Wonderful. And Ombu's going to sleep. Oh, they're so cute. Look at them go. Yawn. I wish I could yawn. Oh. Umbu sits, falls asleep, and then proceeds to poop. Well, I mean, that seems like living the life, right? Comfy place to sleep. Comfy place to evacuate your bowels. Eating weird mushroom things. No, I can't complain. I'd probably do the same if I was a giant kaiju. Alright, so... Let's kind of take a look at our resources here. This is all fine. Um, we definitely want that doctor. But as soon as possible, because that'll be, we got, what, 26 seconds? We can wait a little while longer. So we are gaming the system a little bit. We'll pick them up. Oh! <laughs> hi, Varu. Hi, Quinnity. Welcome in. Take a seat on the back of this giant kaiju-looking thing. Uh, welcome to Onbu. Hi, Varu. Nice to see you. Hi, Crabbo with the Stabo. Is this a double raid? Oh, no. Yep, it sure is. Welcome in, raiders. We're playing some wandering village as fitting a wanderer such as me. But this time, it's a village that's doing the wandering. So let's kind of talk about that. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for the follows. Welcome everybody in. Um, so we have two poisoned people, unfortunately, so we'll have to heal them. But let's kind of like go over this game really quick. So Ombu just laid down, fell asleep in this comfy place, and then proceeded to poop itself. Because that's what giant monsters do. But let's kind of talk about this game. It's a 2.5D uh, city builder in a post-apocalyptic world where mushrooms got a little bit too mushroomy for their own good. And now are horribly toxic. So we find this thing called an Anbu, a six-legged like kaiju dragon dinosaur thing uh and we're building a village on its back and it's a exercise of mutual trust respect survival and all those other cool things so it is a roguelike and we just unlocked scavenging as a thing welcome in everybody <laughs> 2.5 4.5 per shame oh do i i don't think i get that one <laughs> heal shadow but yeah welcome in everybody um so we actually just unlocked scavenging. We're trying to scavenge as much as possible before Onbu moves on, but it looks like we'll have a few pauses to kind of get our bearings. This is a game where you do have to kind of pre-plan things out and it does feel like an early build helps a lot um, because there's a lot of things gated by research and it doesn't feel entirely like a game that um, 
respects that sort of, oh, you, you can take it at your own pace. You definitely have to think about things in terms of time. Like, for example, we have two nomads that are poisoned. And as they get more and more poisoned, they'll be more unhappy. They'll die. They'll, that'll make other people unhappy. If you played Cult of the Lamb, it'll be like that as well. Oh, 2.5 dimensions. Oh, I see. Yeah, 4.5 for sure. Fifth dimensional beings. We were just talking about fifth dimensional beings. Kind of like how, you know, people uh, will look at gingerbread men and go, man, it's really screwed up that gingerbread men live in houses of their own flesh. But, you know, in the fifth dimension, they look down on us because we're carbon based life forms. And, you know, when we chop down some trees to make houses out of that flesh, it's like, oh, those carbon based life forms are at it again. But yeah, 2.5 Dimensions is kind of Paper Mario style. I really like it. It's charming. It, it's a very nice painterly style for all this. Maybe I need to get Moon uh, to collab on on a game like this with me because Moon's art style would actually be perfect. If you don't know Moon, Volmoon, Secund, uh, they do a lot of assets for me. They're a great friend of the channel. Love them. Let's get some shout outs going, though, because that's what I forgot because I don't have a mod team. So let's get a shout out for Varu. Let's get a shout out for Coinaby. Thank you so much. What were you playing? Because I thought, yeah, you were playing Terraria. I know there was a new update. I'm not sure whether it's a mod update or an actual uh, game update, but I would not be surprised if it was a game update because that game seems to update way more than it should. Or a game that officially is supposed to have no updates, you know? All right, so as with city builders, we're kind of in that spot where we're kind of just waiting for resources. We're kind of waiting for stuff to happen. Uh, let's check out our salvaging. It's going pretty well. But yeah, if you like uh, city builders with an interesting premise, um, I'm enjoying it. I think it's a very cool sort of idea for a game it's it's pretty simple so far but we haven't gotten past like the early game roadblocks we haven't gotten past our first like uh fungal storm sort of thing so we'll figure out as we go along i'm not sure if we'll actually be able to heal these nomads but we're gonna try our best and let's see they have their final tour every year but yeah that, that's definitely true but Terraria is like one of those greatest hits games um, that people don't know, but actually started on 4chan using stolen Final Fantasy sprites, which I thought was, you know, kind of cool. I remember playing in the very, very first, like, public test build, if you can even call that, and uh, with the Eye of Cthulhu, and that was, that was great fun. Lots of great memories with Terraria. All right, I think we have the Hornblower unlocked, don't we? We should probably build that. So the horn blower has to be here at the head. But we're... I don't want to get rid of all these berries. I don't think I care about the dirt as much. So I will just build a road right here. That would probably be fine. Uh, this isn't going to be a huge priority, but it... We eventually do want to get that because Anbu will take us down paths we do not want to be on and it contains spooky fungus. Hopefully we can save these people before they die, but if they don't, unfortunately we won't be able to. Settlers, yes, pick them up immediately. I need more, I need more healthy and hungry people. That's fine, we have plenty of food. I need more employees. They're unemployed slash idle, so let's put them to work. More farmers. Uh, we need more of these. We have berry farmers. All right, how much more do we have here? Oh, and definitely more workers. So we'll get some more general workers. What else do we have here? We're good on, we're good on. Okay, 69. Look who blew in a windswept wanderer. Yes, a windswept wanderer playing the wandering village. Are you telling me that a wanderer built this village? Oh, I sure did. Thank you so much for the 69 bits, Miso. <laughs> ah, but yes. So, this, uh, this game definitely is right up my alley. I love wandering. I love villages. When you combine those two things, I mean, if this game had a floating island, I'd probably love it even more. But building 
stuff on a giant dragon is also really cool. Are scavengers back yet? They've been back. All right, send party back. Uh, we definitely want to get to these settlements, build, um, get as much people ASAP early on, and kind of have them do a lot of, you know, kind of monotonous big Z work so we actually have the resources to start scaling up. Because once we start getting... Um, the quote unquote renewable resource tech, it'll be way easier. And I definitely want to unlock stone as fast as possible because we are running out of that. We had to dig up a spike, unfortunately, and Anbu hates that. So we'll probably also put a gathering station here because that's eventually going to be the heart of our industrial district. So worker post here. I'm actually going to set that to max since we are going to have badly poisoned yeah hopefully we can get that doctor it's only a few percentage points away don't stop working now you have lives to save oh they stop working nope there we go okay let's see village doctor on boot commands villager needs whatever um is it done I think it might be done so let's uh let's actually get the decontaminator next that's probably going to be very useful um i don't think we really care about that just yet sawmill is the next thing i want to take care of but we don't have knowledge unfortunately so we're going to just research the decontaminator and probably go into the scout tower I think that's probably going to be their smartest route so we can get a little bit of extra sight. It would be nice if late game you can make huge quarries that you would have to revisit once in a while. Yeah, you can do something like that. You can actually drill into Anbu's back and gather stone from the crust, but that lowers its trust. And this game has kind of a um, balancing act in terms of the trust system. Futurama where Bender had a world living on him. Yeah, that's exactly like that episode, except Anbu is a benevolent god. They only want to eat, sleep, and poop. But when it's time for breeding, uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be an experience in of itself. Anyway, um, let's kind of take a look at where we can build a doctor, because we definitely want to try to save those people. We're a little late on getting a doctor. I kind of mentioned this before, this game does seem like there is a optimized route you want to take to make sure you you kind of hit all the check boxes to make sure uh these pre-planned events go the way you want them to we only have one wood plank for example which isn't great need more wood that's fine even if they die it'll just you know tank our happiness for a little bit we're like capitalists now and it's perfectly fine as long as we keep finding more villages to to bring people back to our place. Uh, it'll be fine. So far, it looks like everything's going pretty well. We only have one unemployed person. That's fine. Thought she'd probably be our doctor. Um, yeah, village doctor should really be top priority. So we have plenty of herbs. I meant off of the... Uh, <laughs> random unemployed guy. Yeah, it's it's a metaphor for the unemployment rate in economic capitalism, where, you know, you always have some percentage of people who just want to, you know, vibe. Just like Anbu. Maybe, maybe the one unemployed person is Anbu. They have a very important job. They have to carry us on their back. I love this guy. All right, so Ombu seems unsure of where we're going. Hopefully it's not into the mushroom zone. And actually we just hit one hour. So I'm going to stop this recording right here. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the first episode of The Wandering Village. We kind of started with the tutorial. We're gonna play this run through. So if you're on Twitch, stick around. We're gonna keep playing. Uh, if you aren't and you're watching the VOD, hopefully we'll see you in so too, where a wanderer builds a village that wanders, and uh, maybe we'll see each other in real life if you wander over to a con, all that good stuff. So hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.